Welcome back to Photoshop Basics on PSD Touch Plus. I'm Martin Perhiniak, and today we are going to talk about color modes and bit depth. After discussing pixels and resolution in the previous tutorial, now we are going to learn more about colors in digital images. First, you need to know what is the difference between RGB and CMYK color modes. RGB color mode is used in all devices that use light to represent colors. Devices like the monitors of your computer, TV screens, digital cameras, scanners, projectors, etc. And all the other devices, like printers mainly, use CMYK color mode, which is based on mixing inks together. RGB means red, green and blue, the three main colors in that color mode. And if you mix these colors together, you will get white, as you can see on this image. On the contrary, with CMYK, if you mix cyan, magenta and yellow together, you will get black. The K in CMYK is the key color which is black. We need the black as a separate color to emphasize the black parts of images and to help the other three colors to be able to print a rich black color. As you can see, the main difference what I try to simulate on these two images is the intensity of colors. With RGB images, we have more intense and vibrant colors while the CMYK images are a bit faded compared to RGB. To see this difference or to simulate this difference, you can use proof setup under the view menu. You just simply need to choose this option called proof colors to simulate a standard CMYK option on your screen. As you can see here on the top in the tab, we see that our image is in RGB mode, but now we simulate the CMYK colors. You can use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl or Command Y to see without the proof setup or with the proof setup. So it's a toggle between the two states. If I zoom a little bit even closer, and this is RGB now, this is CMYK now. So you can see the slight difference RGB and CMYK. And of course you can simulate any devices that you want or that you have a color profile for. Under the view proof setup options you can choose custom and here you can select all the color profiles, the ICC profiles that you have installed on your computer. Color profiles are the most important things if you want to work in a color managed for workflow. The second step I would say is to calibrate your monitor. You can also see the difference between CMYK and RGB if you go into the colors here on the toolbar and double click on one of them. I will double click on the foreground color and that gives me the color picker option. Here if I select a very rich green from the top you can see a warning sign here on the top which tells us that this color can be only shown on screen but I can't mix this out from CMYK. So if I click on this warning sign it will show me what is the closest color to that selected rich green if I'm going to print this out in a CMYK color mode. As you can see it's a big jump. I can also show you that with a magenta or purple color. I, I'm on the top here, this is the color selected, and I click on the warning sign which shows me what is the closest color in CMYK to that. So always make sure if you work for print, try to use colors that can be mixed from CMYK. You can also use color libraries if you click on that option. And then you can use spot colors, for example, from the Pantone color books. These spot colors are great if you need to make sure that, for example, a logo uses the same colors all the time, consistent 
no matter where they print it out in the whole world. If I go back to the color picker panel, it is easy to understand another way how we can refer to colors, which is the hue, saturation and brightness. In this column, I have all my colors. These, this is called the hue and it's measured in degrees, 360 degrees, because this is actually a color wheel. And on this square, we see the saturation from left to right. I increase the saturation. And from top to bottom, I have the brightness. In the color picker window, you have HSB, RGB, CMYK and lab color modes. And also we have the six digit number, which can be used on websites with HTML code. So for example, white is 6F or black is 60. You can always save a selected color by clicking on add to swatches. You can name that swatch. And then if you go to your swatches panel, you will find that swatch at the end of the list. Another really important thing with digital images is how many colors we can store on one pixel. Of course, one pixel can only represent one color, but the actual gamut or scale of possible colors in a digital image is measured by bit depth. A one bit photograph is a black and white image where we only have white and black pixels for the photograph. An 8-bit image can be a grayscale image, stores 256 colors, which is 2 on the power of 8, and that shows a much better smooth quality black and white image. Technically, we refer to this as grayscale, but most of the time we also say this is a black and white image. The standard color image is the 24-bit RGB image, which has 8-bit color information stored for each color channel, the red, the green and the blue. This means that we have 16.7 million variations of colors for each pixels of the photograph. Again, that is 2 on the power of 24. But sometimes even 16 million is not enough. In recent years, camera raw format became a standard and nowadays I would say it's better to work whenever you can with camera raw files instead of using JPEG image files. The only disadvantage of camera raw files is the file size, so they are much larger than JPEG images. But as you can see from the original photograph, using adjustments in Photoshop, you can get to a point where you see more information in colors and details with a JPEG image, which has 24 bit depth, but you can get much more color information and detail after adjusting it from the original photograph if you use a 36 bit camera raw image. This is the camera raw bit depth if you have 12 bits per channel stored, but that's just the default camera raw condition. Nowadays we have also 14 or 16 bit per channel camera raw files, which have even more color information stored. I will show you other advantages of camera raw files in another episode. But for now, just remember that whenever you can try capturing or using camera raw files instead of using JPEG image files. Because as you can see, for editing, it gives us much more options and much better results. In the next episode, I will talk more about histograms and the tonal information stored in photographs and how to use shadow highlights and levels adjustments. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.